The death of General Sanya Abacha on June 8, 1998 marked a pivotal moment in Nigerian history. Born in 1943, Abacha had a notable military career, eventually rising to become the head of state of Nigeria from November 17, 1993 until his sudden death on the fateful day in 1988. His rule was characterized by allegations of corruption, human rights abuses, and political repression, making his death a moment of profound significance. The official narrative provided by the Nigerian government attributed Abracha's death to a sudden heart attack. According to this account, he passed away at the presidential villa in Abuja, surrounded by some of his closest aides. As per Islamic tradition, he was buried on the same day without undergoing an official autopsy. However, this official explanation has faced persistent doubts and conspiracy theories, leaving many question whether Abacha's death was indeed as a result of natural causes. One prominent conspiracy theory suggests that Abacha was poisoned. Variations of this theory propose that he was given an apple laced with poison while in the company of sex workers. Another school of thought posed that he was extrajudicially executed through poisoning possibly orchestrated by his political rivals. The poisoning theory gained prominence when on July 11, 1998, the New York Times reported that the U.S. intelligence analyst had evidence suggesting Abacha was poisoned while in the company of three prostitutes. The nationalities of these individuals were not specified in the report. The Irish Times on July 15, 1998 mentioned the poisoning rumor but reported the official cause of the death as heart attack. In contrast, the Associated Press, known as AP, reported on June 8, 1998, that Abracha died of heart attack without mentioning any poisoning by sex workers. The AP further reported that heavily armed soldiers sealed off Abracha's residence and office in Abuja after his death, with only top military officers granted access. General Abacha's family did not disclose the cause of the death, but announced that they will follow Islamic practice and hold a funeral within the next 24 hours. During this period, the Nigerian government did not officially announce the actual cause of General Abacha's death. The news of General Abacha's passing elicited a wide range of reactions across Nigeria, each reflecting the complex political climate of the time. In Lagos and other parts of the country, many Nigerians celebrated upon hearing of Abacha's death, viewing it as an opportunity for a return to democracy. Even though the military leadership was not eager to relinquish power, noble laureate Wole Shoinka, who was in exile in Jerusalem at that time, saw Abacha's death, if natural, as a graceful exit. He believed it presented an opportunity for Nigerian civic society, the military, and the international community to facilitate a transition to a civilian role. Ghani Fawemi, a prominent human rights lawyer and the head of the Joint Action Committee of Nigeria, characterized Abacha as an evil man. Ghani Fawemi, through his organization, called for the military to allow Chief M.K. Wabiola, who was still alive at that time, to lead a government of national unity taxed with drafting a new constitution and organizing a new elections. One of the most substantial pieces of information regarding Abacha's death came from his chief security officer and the person of Major Hamza Al-Mustafa. Al-Mustafa firmly rejected the notion that Abacha died from eating poison apples provided by sex workers. Instead, he claimed that General Abacha was poisoned by Israeli operatives while in the company of Yasser Arafat, the former chairman of the Palestinian National Authority. According to Al-Mustafa, Abacha's health issues began on June 7, 1998, shortly after he shook hands with one of Arafat's security operatives at Namdi Azikiwe International Airport in Abuja. From that point, the general's health deteriorated rapidly. Around 6 p.m. on June 7, 1998, Abacha's personal physician in the person of Dr. Sadiq Suleiman Wali administrated an injection to stabilize him. Dr. Wali advised Abacha to rest briefly. On the morning of June 8, 1998, Abacha was still in his work clothes and he was found to be very unstable. Despite efforts to resuscitate him, he passed away. Dr. Wale took blood, urine and hair samples to investigate the cause of the death, suggesting that it may not have been natural. In an interview with BBC released on July 7, 2015, Dr. Sadiq Suleiman Wali provided additional insight to Abracha's death. Dr. Wali maintained that Abracha's health was generally good before his passing. He refuted the notion that Abracha consumed poison apples served by sex workers as he found no woman present when he arrived at the villa. 
Upon receiving a call from Al Mustafa to attend to Abacha, Dr. Wali arrived to find another doctor attempting to resuscitate the general. Despite the efforts, Abacha's condition continued to worsen until he was pronounced dead. Dr. Wali's determination to determine the cause of his death led to him to suggest an autopsy. However, the Abacha family declined, opting for a quick burial in accordance with Islamic rights. The true cause of Sanya Abacha's death remains shrouded in mystery. The immediate aftermath of General Sanya Abacha's death was marked by uncertainty and significant changes in Nigerian leadership. He was buried on the same day of his death in Kano in northwest Nigeria at the age of 54. Remarkably, he spent 54 months in office as Nigeria's 10th head of state. Interestingly, his birth, together with his death, both occurred on the same day, which is on a Monday. General Abacha was married to Miriam Abacha and had seven sons and three daughters. As of 2018, he had 33 grandchildren. Following Abacha's death, Major General Abdul Salami Abubakar, Nigeria's Chief of Defense Staff, was swiftly sworn in as the country's 11th Head of State on June 9, 1998. This brief ceremony marked the end of Abacha's regime and signified Nigeria's transition towards democracy. It is worth noting that the tale surrounding General Sanya Abacha's death took another twist when, just 30 days later, M.K. Wabiola, Another prominent Nigerian figure also passed away under unclear circumstances, with reports of foaming at the mouth. This event raised questions and heightened suspicions, leaving the Nigerian public and international community with enduring curiosity about the true circumstances of these notable deaths. Decades have passed since General Bacha's death, yet the mystery surrounding his demise remains a subject of intrigue, speculation and controversies in Nigeria's history. Despite the passage of time and numerous testimonies, the exact cause of his passing remains uncertain. This enduring fascination with the circumstances of his death underscores the profound impact he had on Nigeria and its political landscape. To see how Peter Obi of the Labour Party became Nigeria's smartest politician, click on the video showing right here on your screen. Click on this video and I will see you there.